Spooky story time. Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Callista and since we are not doing anything for Halloween this year, we're all stuck inside, I figured it was a good time to finally film something that I've been wanting to film since I started this channel. Now I've got a lot of personal experiences that a lot of my friends know about but I figured it was time to share some of them with the world. But I also asked for your stories on my Instagram. That's why I've got my laptop right here. I've got them all written down and I've gotten permission to share them so pause this video right now grab a cup of hot chocolate or hot tea or whatever you like and snuggle up because you're in for a ride before we start don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and the little bell on the side so for our very first story it's something that happened in my old house I used to stay in Sigama so if you're from Sabah you'll know right in the middle of town opposite was Mamadeka so many creepy things happened in that house that I kind of became numb. It happened so often that I didn't even care anymore, and not just to me, but to my mom as well. So I wanted to tell you an experience that we both went through. Just a little background, we used to all share one room, my mom, my dad on a queen size bed, and then it was me and my brother Oliver on two single mattresses on the floor. And I used to experience sleep paralysis so much that it didn't even really phase me anymore. It was literally like every other night. So one night I was lying in bed. Me and Ollie used to go to bed before my parents, obviously. This was when I was like 15, 16 years old. So we were lying in bed and as I was finally dozing off, I got jolted wide awake because I felt someone squeeze my waist. It was like this and it was hard, okay? I could kind of feel each individual finger mark on my waist. It was that hard. I thought it was Ali because we do stupid stuff to each other all the time. So I like turned around but his back was facing me. So we do dumb things to each other but we never pretend it never happened. Obviously because of all the sleep paralysis and all the weird things that happened in that house, it just clicked. I was like, okay, don't acknowledge it anymore. I just lay back down, pull the covers back up and go back to sleep because that's my superpower if something weird happens i'm able to fall straight to sleep and in the morning of course i asked him about it and he said no he was asleep i had no idea what i was talking about but when i woke up i could still feel the finger marks it, it was literally like one thumb mark at the back or at the front like this and it felt bruised so i know it wasn't a dream fast forward a few years later when we actually moved out of that house my mom had experienced things but she didn't want to tell us why we were still staying there because she didn't want to scare us so when we finally moved out we forced her to tell us some of the stories and one of them was that one night she was lying in bed and sometimes she used to lie upside down because the fan was nearer to your feet so say for instance my dad and my mom like this but she would turn the other way so my dad's head would be here and then her head would be here so her legs are like down here right it was just because she felt cooler that way and as she was lying there she felt like my dad grabbed hold of her leg so she's just lying there and my dad sometimes has weird dreams so he does weird stuff all the time so she was just lying there waiting for him to like let go but he kept squeezing harder and harder and harder as time went by and it started to hurt so she sat up she wanted to like tell him to like stop it right as soon as she sat up it let go my dad was facing the other side of the room so same thing now. she also just was like Okay, lie back down, go to sleep. This kind of thing happened to both of us in the same house, in the same room. Coincidence? I think not. <sighs> yeah. A lot of other things happened in that house, but it would take a whole video for me to tell you. So, my next story actually comes from Lloydrian on Instagram, and I'm gonna have to read this one. When I was in my second semester of my diploma, I was staying in UITM Sarawak's Samarahan 2 Hostel. Uh, don't sue me UITM Sarawak, this is not my story. <laughs> One night, I went to the washroom and while I was using the toilet, the shower, which is right above the toilet, suddenly turned on by itself and I got soaking wet. It was only for a few seconds and I'm sure there's an explanation to it, but it was definitely weird. So if you're also staying at a hostel in UITM Sarawak, please drop a comment down below and let me know if anything weird has ever happened to you because I know a lot of people have the same kind of stories coming out of the same hostel. Yoda. Are you scared? He's all dressed up for Halloween. Our third story is from 
Aish Aziz, I hope I'm saying the name right, also from Instagram who actually has a couple of stories. When I was like five or six, I was walking upstairs in my house in Bangsa and out of nowhere a hand appeared and tripped me. So I did ask and they actually saw the hand so that was pretty insane and they also saw a piano playing by itself back in secondary school with their friend who literally walked up to the piano and no one was there. The craziest story is that their friend got possessed twice, once in standard 5 when he actually broke a chair and a window in class and then started chasing them and once in form 1. So to be honest I've heard a lot of possession stories coming out of schools in Malaysia. A friend once told me how they actually have drills so if someone is hysterical in one of the classes and starts screaming, the prefects actually have a drill where they go out and they have to lock all the grills on the staircases and kind of like block off the classroom where the possessed student is, usually they're female. I thankfully have never experienced that because um, possession terrifies me. I was totally freaked out for like months when I watched The Exorcist when I was in Form 1. It would have just given me nightmares forever if I had experienced it. But if you've experienced it and you've also known of these drills that happen in secondary schools, please drop me a comment and let me know what it was like. Okay, story number four. This is from my friend Lisan. When I was around six years old, I was running an insane high fever. It was one of those where I would hallucinate the most random things like cargo wheels being on fire and dancing or elephants jumping into my soup. Reminds me of like the old Dumbo cartoon for some reason. I'd also be very restless. My brain felt like it was about to explode and being so young, I had a tough time explaining to my mom what I was seeing and how I felt. One of the times she was carrying me to the washroom to wipe my face because I was heating up and crying that everything was on fire and my mom's head was on fire as well. I pointed behind her and said there was an uncle with his head on fire too. There wasn't anyone there but my mom just begged into thin air to please leave me alone and with all the distress I passed out and fell asleep. A few days later the fever was gone and she was showing me an old photo album with a group of people, you know the type they take at Chinese New Year gatherings with all your aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents etc and I immediately pointed at one old man and started screaming ghost ghost he was the uncle that I had seen standing behind my mom when I had a fever. It was my grandfather, my mom's dad. I'd never seen him in my lifetime because he died way before I was even born. Goosebumps. I've heard stories like this so often, but like for someone I actually know to experience it, I don't know, I just find it really, really creepy. So I know a lot of people don't believe in supernatural. I definitely do because of all the experiences that I've had. Let me know, believe or not, drop me a comment down below and if you can, tell me why. Because I always find it curious, like why do some people believe and why do some people don't. Yeah. And finally, I'm going to leave you with another story of my own. I've got a lot but I'm just gonna choose two. One which happened back in Sabah and one that happened up in Genting Highlands. So before I joined radio, I did a lot of MC gigs up in Genting, right? And this is, of course, before all the renovations went on, so it doesn't look anything like it does now. It was just basically the whole mall and big indoor theme park thing did not exist. And most of the shows I did were stage shows. There was a bunch of us together and we had so much fun, but being the MC, a lot of times I usually got my own room, which was great. I loved it, except for this one time. Each show usually lasts around one to two months and every time I stayed there I had the same routine. It's always a twin room. I always sleep on the bed nearest to the door and where the dressing table is. So the bed nearest to the window, I always put my suitcase on it, leave it open and then I'll take the pillows from the other bed and I'll have one on my head, one on my left, one on my right and then I have the quilt. And because of course it's bending so it's always cold so I never have the fan on and I only ask for my room to be cleaned once a week. All the other days I'll put the do not disturb sign on the door. Usually it's fine, nobody will ever come into the room, but in this particular room, for some reason every other day I'd get back and it doesn't matter if I'd get back after lunch or at night, all the lights would be turned on and the fan would be on full blast max. You could hear it like and I'm just like weird, maybe someone came in to check my room, but they never made up my room. They never made the bed, they never changed the towels, nothing. It was just the lights and the fan floor. But we also got to send three pieces of laundry down to the laundry room to be cleaned because of course we're there for one or two months, right? But when it comes to like in a way like bras, you don't want to put it in a washing machine without like protection, right? I chose to 
wash it myself so i'd wash it in the sink and then the toilet door is here right open the door it's like a sliding door the sink is here the toilet's here and then there's like a rack above the toilet and then the shower is on the side i'd wash it in the sink and then i'd leave it on the rack which is above the toilet it's a pretty small toilet but there's still kind of a distance between the toilet and the door for some reason and on three different occasions i'd wake up open the bathroom door and my bra was just in front of the door if you've ever stayed in this particular hotel in gandhi highlands there's no windows in this toilet so obviously there's no breeze if it were to fall through the gaps in the rack it would have fallen onto the toilet into the toilet or right next to the toilet but no this was like it fell and it was just in front of the door so i've got no explanation till this day but out of all of the rooms that i've stayed in and i've stayed in a lot over there because i was up there a lot this was the only room that ever gave me uncomfortable vibes i never wanted to stay there alone i would only go to my room when it was time to sleep and can think it's cold right especially at night so i'd shower in the morning i'd always try to get someone to come to my room just like wait there until i finished showering there's also one night that i woke up just as i was falling asleep again i just had this feeling like there was something above me and it only happened once i never opened my eyes to confirm though i just kind of pulled the blanket up till here and again my superpower i just fell straight to sleep and in the morning it was fine so yes that was weird but it was just that one time successfully creeped myself out right now so that's all i've got for this video i hope that you liked it and that the stories gave you a few shivers if they did don't forget to hit the like button drop me a comment if you've had any scary experiences if you would like to hear more let me know as well subscribe if you haven't and i've got a bonus scary story on tiktok that i told a few months back this was what kind of gave me the push to make this video so i'll link it down below go check it out it happened on a flyover near bukit true story all my stories i've got kind of like witnesses so follow me if you're on tiktok as well and thanks for watching and have a very scary halloween